Hello everyone, today I'm going to be ranking all of John Mayer's studio albums. If you would like to skip right to my ranking, I'm going to have a timestamp on the screen right here to where you guys can skip to. If you want to know where I put specific albums, I will have timestamps down below in the description to where you can skip around. And now let's get into a couple of disclaimers. Number one, this is just my personal opinion and interpretation. I'd love to hear yours down below. Just keep it respectful, please. I'm going to be reading off my phone as I always do. Sorry for any background noise or dust particles that may occur throughout this video. I don't condone things that he said and done in the past. He definitely deserves to be held accountable. Everything that I referenced to make this video and mention will be linked down below in the description. Lastly, if I have any notes I forget to check down below, I might have a pinned comment and let's get into it. At number eight, I have Paradise Valley. This album is just middle of the road to me. It's just meh. It doesn't stick with me. It feels very bland. And for the most part, these songs just go in one ear and out the other. Some songs that I do enjoy are going to be Wildfire and Wayne on the Day. They're all right, but they don't have a lot of replay value for me personally. And the one that sticks with me most is going to be Paper Doll. I think it's catchy. Lyrically, I think he's a better songwriter than that. And I do think that it's a weak diss track. Who You Love is one of the worst songs in his entire discography. I find it very corny and repetitive, although I can appreciate the vocals that Katy Perry particularly is giving on the song. I think she really shines here. And overall, this album much just very uninteresting to me even the best songs on here are just middle of the road and the instrumentation isn't as compelling as his past projects the lyricism leaves a lot to be desired for me and i think it's just disappointing in his discography especially because this came right after born and raised and it doesn't have the same spark as his other projects do for me personally it doesn't have a lot of replay value i will say that has grown on me whenever i was listening to it again for this video maybe it can grow on me more for the future but this was an easy decision as far as the ranking and that's just my personal opinion on the album for now and now on to number seven which is going to be heavier things i think this is a great sophomore album very very underrated in his discography i will say and i don't listen to this album a whole lot but whenever i do i really enjoy myself it really hits i just have to be in a very specific mood to listen to it and i saw someone on reddit basically say that this album is kind of perfect to listen to whenever you don't have a lot going on and kind of mundane situation and they describe it a lot better than i do i will find it and link it down below in the description and everything but that's something i would agree with for sure and and Clarity is a gorgeous opener. I really enjoy it musically and I was reading about it and he says it was written about the first few seconds after waking up in the morning when you don't remember all of the problems and worries in your life. Home Life does not get enough appreciation in his discography for me and it is sickening. I think it's one of the best songs he's ever released, one of the most compelling songs and I think it has these fascinating chord progressions and I love the bridge on there as well. New Deep and Wheel are also standouts for me personally and I just love the change of pace sonically from his first album. There's more electric guitar in here. It has a darker more moody heavier sound and I just love what he was going for on this album overall and I think that it's playful in the moments where it counts you got the rockers like only hard and daughters is a great song even though it is overplayed but I still can appreciate the message and everything that he did with that song I know a lot of people don't care for the production but personally I love it and the album cover is also one of my favorites as well and I think overall he proved that he wasn't a one-hit wonder and this album has staying power for me personally I think it's great front to back 10 tracks that work well together my least favorite is probably come back to bed probably the weakest song on the album but i still can appreciate it and it's not the song i would necessarily skip and now onto number six which is going to be born and raised i think that this is a pretty solid effort overall the only song i really cannot stand is shadow days that song makes me cringe i will skip it every single time no matter what something like olivia is an okay song and i just think that it is a couple of everything else on the album that's another song i will skip but i don't think it's a bad song by any means Walt Grace's Submarine Test is tricky because it definitely sounds like Love Bug by the Jonas Brothers, but I can appreciate that song. Some songs that sound to me, Queen of California, I think the riff that he's playing on there is very addicting, particularly. I love the storytelling on there, very interesting to listen to. Born and Raised is a worthy title track. I love Whiskey, Whiskey, Whiskey because of the honesty on there and a very haunting song as well, I will say. And overall, the music is engaging and well-crafted. The lyricism is very strong. I love whenever he says, I am an architect of days that haven't happened yet. I love the vocal performances on here as well. And it's just great because it shows his growth as an artist. There is something so calming, so peaceful about this album that I love. And I appreciate how he's going in more like the country folk type sound. It is just really nice to listen to and I also like the album cover as well very intricate and I like everything that's going on there now to number five which is going to be Saw Rock I think this was the perfect album for the summer really enjoyed listening to it whenever it did come out I will say very rejuvenating there's 10 tracks on here which is fine because they all work super well together despite the fact that some of them were released years beforehand which is really just a testament to the strength of the tracks and the track listing which I can always appreciate and it's definitely one of his weaker albums lyrically but I do enjoy it sonically for sure and there are no skips on here which is 
is why it's in this placement for me. My favorite tracks are going to be Why You Know Love Me. The chord progressions in there are just mind-blowing. I love Wild Blue because it has this gorgeous guitar solo on there and New Light is just an earworm. The song that just keeps giving for me personally. I think it does a great job of achieving that 80s sound and aesthetic especially in the music videos particularly and vocally he's improved so much and that really shines through on this album which counts and I think that this is short, sweet, to the point. I have done a full review on this album so if you want to know my more detailed thoughts I will have that in the cards and down below if you are interested. And now to number four which is going to be Room for Squares. I think that this is a very impressive debut album. There's just a light, there's just an energy that is captured on here. Very unique in his discography I will say. Some songs that I don't really care for, Your Body is a Wonderland, this song is just juvenile to me, I will skip it. And then also I don't really particularly care for the version of Neon that is on this album. I think it pales in comparison to the Where the Light is version. And then also Not Myself is one I could live without. It's not a song that I would particularly skip but I just feel like it's a couple of everything else on the album. But whenever this album shines it really shines. Some of my favorite songs are going to be 83. There is just such a comfort about it. I like his vocal in there particularly as well. 3 by 5 has these really interesting chord progressions. City Love has this snarky lyrics that he's known for a while also being great to listen to. The instrumentation is moody and eventful and I like where he goes there. My Stupid Mouth is a very self-aware song and enjoyable to listen to. No such thing as a banger. Another track I wanted to mention is Great Indoors. This track has definitely grown on me over time. I've come to appreciate it more. I like his vocal on there. I like the lyrics. I like the instrumentation as well. And this album just represents being young, having that fire in you to start off your life. And I think that the music on here is fantastic. The lyrics are pointed and sharp, which I appreciate. He proves that he's a great singer. He knows his way around the hook. He's a very talented instrumentalist. And I feel he grows so much in his upcoming albums in terms of his singing. For sure, he gets so much stronger. But nonetheless, this is still a great debut album. And now to number three, which is going to be The Search for Everything. This is such a treat to listen to. Still Feel Like Your Man is such a memorable opener, very captivating. I love the intro. I love the instrumentation on that track. Emoji of a Wave is a dumb title, but a mind-blowing song. The harmonies on there are gorgeous. The instrumentation is something else. And I love particularly whenever he says, your heart is where my head should be. The dissonance is killing me. It breaks my heart. Moving on and getting over is so gratifying to listen to. Love on the Weekend is a light, digestible, fun track. Rosie has outstanding instrumentation. And the blood is interesting in terms of the subject matter, a very substantial track on the album, something that has you feeling a lot, which I can always appreciate. I think this album was just a great return to form after Paradise Valley. It has catchy hooks, the songwriting is compelling, the vocals are well done, and I appreciate the energy, how it makes me feel whenever I listen to it. And it's just a smooth, solid album that sees him tackling the difficulty of the relationship that he was in, really getting to the heart of it. And I think this album just has so much substance in it. There's no skips on here either. And I do like to think of this and Saw Rock as compendium albums. I do like to put them on next to each other. And now onto number two, which is going to be Battle Studies. Following up an album like Continuum is no small feat. It is a very tall order. And I think that overall, he does that very well on this album. It has some of his best work, some of my favorite songs in his entire discography, and is very strong all the way throughout. And some songs that really stand out to me in particular are going to be Edge of Desire, which I think is an impeccable track. Musically, it's well formed. The lyrics are stunning. And he sings with such conviction and emotion, which I appreciate. I I love particularly whenever he says I want you so bad I'll go back on the things I believe. I also quite enjoy War My Life and Friends Lovers or Nothing is a mind-blowing closing track just something that is very memorable and just perfectly ends the album and I also love Who Says such a fun listen. And the last track I wanted to mention is Half My Heart. Musically, I love it and I like the lyrics and his honesty on that song as well. Overall, I think that this is a brilliant album. I love the intensity of the vocals, the immaculate instrumentation, the lyrics as he articulates his struggles with love well. And the only song that I really would skip is Crossroads, which is a cover. It's not particularly my cup of tea, but it's not a bad song at all. And yeah, this is just one that has a special place in my heart and just one that always has me laser focused whenever I listen to it. And it's just great for so many like different moods. I like the album cover too and just what he was going for on this album and just some of his best work overall in my personal opinion. And now to my number one pick which is going to be Continuum. Not a shocker that I have this one here. It's widely agreed upon that this is his best work. I think that he was just at the top of his game here in every single way. Musically it's so intriguing to listen to. You have these riffs that refuse to get out of your head. The musicality that he displays is mind-blowing and I think that sonically it's exceptional. You have these blues songs, you got the singer-songwriter, you have the rock songs going on and I really like like his cover of Bold as Love particularly. I really like the vocal on there, one of my favorite vocal performances from him. The lyrics on here are top notch, they're going to stay with you, they're going to strike a chord, and they're especially prominent and memorable in a song like Stop This Train, which is just 
a song about him being afraid of getting older and having to come to terms with that and enjoy the life that he does have. Waiting on the World to Change and Belief have an anti-war sentiment, but they're not too preachy. And another track that I really wanted to mention is going to be The Heart of Life, which is just one of my favorite songs that he's ever done. I love the guitar on there. And the last song I wanted to mention is Vultures. I think it's a really catchy track overall. And his vocals on here are beautiful to listen to and well done. And I like every single song in here. I feel like they all have a purpose. I feel like there's no filler on this entire album for sure. And this is just a masterpiece overall. This commands your attention listening to it. 12 songs, well thought out, well executed on every single front. And I just had to put this at the number one spot because I love it so much. And just a stunning piece of work overall. Now to my ranking recap, which is going to be on the screen right next to me. Feeling pretty good about this. I'm kind of sad that I had to put Heavier Things so low because I really do enjoy the album, but I had to be more objective about what I actually listened to. And I feel like the albums above it are stronger, especially Born and Raised for sure. Like lyrically, it's stronger. It's an easier listen and all of that. So that's why I had it up there. But on any given day, I could definitely switch those two. The rest, I feel pretty set on those. But of course, as I listen to it more, again, I can change my opinions. But that's just how I'm feeling right now. What do you guys think? What are your favorite albums? Do you agree with me? Do you disagree with me? Let me know down below in the comments because I would love to read them. And now I wanted to share my overall thoughts on John Mayer as an artist. I think that he is a great singer. He has improved so much from his first album, A Brilliant Guitarist. His live renditions was something else. I love all those solos he adds in and everything. And just a very, very skilled guitarist who has really honed in his craft a top tier songwriter i really love the lyrics he writes they are just very introspective they make you think he's very clever with the songwriting and just a very talented musician overall and i do enjoy his catalog and it was fun getting to do this and i've been meaning to rank his albums for a bit and i finally got onto it so i hope that you guys enjoy and lastly i have done some more videos on him so i have those at the end of this video in the cards down below in the description if you'd like to check that out but that's going to be it for this video if you guys enjoyed it please just give it a like it really helps me on the youtube algorithm i very much appreciate it. you can subscribe for more videos like this you get the bell you get a notification your phone every single time i post you not miss when a brand new video comes out i'm going down my twitter my instagram my spotify if you would like to follow me links to stream his music if you haven't already lastly links to educate you guys on important situations thanks so much for watching this video and i'll see you in my next one